Hello everyone, my name is Sanjoy Basak. I work as a researcher at the Royal Military Academy in the Department of Communication Information Systems and Sensors. Today I'm going to talk about radio frequency based drone detection, classification and localization. This is the outline of my presentation today. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind RF based detection and the detection principles. So I'm going to say how the detection method works. Then I'll talk about uh, an EU funded project that took place between 2016 and 18, which was called Safe Shore. I'll share the findings and observations from this project. Uh, then I'll talk about DAP 1902, which is currently taking place. This is funded by Belgian Defense. I'll also share the finding and observation. And finally, uh, the ongoing and future works. And then you have the question and answer. As you all know, drone performs radio communication with its ground control station or the controller. Uh, as you see, mainly with these three communication links, uh, telemetry, command and control, and the video link. Uh, this is mainly the communication happens be uh, between a uh, drone and uh, is in a non-automated -auto drone and its controller. For automated drones or the drones flying on its waypoints, generally you still have this video and the uh, telemetry link. Uh, they generally perform communication using these frequency bands, uh, 433, 868 MHz or 2.4 and 5, 5 GHz ISM band. Now, how our uh, detection works is that we mainly sense this communication. We listen to these communication links and based on that, we can perform detection. We can classify the type of drone if we have uh, if we have the signal itself in our database. We can uh, estimate the direction of arrival. Uh, we can perform range estimation. We know we can estimate how far the drone is, uh, and also uh, we can extract useful features from the signal itself for a smart RF jamming. These are some examples of drone remote control signal. Uh, as, as you can see here, they hop between frequency to frequency. This is a, a frequency domain representation. So it's, it's called power, spe power spectral density uh, of, the, of the remote control signal of Phantom 2. As you can see, uh, they hop between frequency to frequency. These kind of communications are called frequency hopping spread spectrum. Now, if we plot this kind of spectrum on time, it would look like this. Now, this is a signal from DJI S900. So as you can see, they are hopping between frequency to frequency at a different time. And here one cycle ends and from here the second cycle starts. So these are the spectrums. So, uh, now this representation is also called a spectrogram image. This is another example uh, of signal from Phantom 3 drone. So here you see the video signal. So we, uh, which is also this signal, we call it direct sequence spread spectrum or an OFDM type of signal. And here you see the remote control signal. So which are frequency hopping spread spectrum, which I explained you before. As I mentioned earlier, uh, in between 2016 and 18, we participated in a project called SafeShore. The aim of this project was to develop a multi-sensor multi -sensor system uh, for detecting UAVs passing maritime border to enhance the security system. Uh, there, we proposed an RF-based solution to detect the drone and drone and its controller. So uh, the, uh, this is our passive radio system architecture. So we had two subsystems, two identical subsystems, and one on central processing node. On each subsystem, we used four antenna arrays, uh, four, uh, four and uh, one array with four antenna. Uh, there, we uh, detected the presence of a drone using goodness of fit based spectrum uh, spectrum sensing algorithm. Uh, now, after detecting the presence of a drone based on RF detection, uh, then we performed the direction of arrival estimation using music algorithm using this antenna array. Now, after performing, uh, after estimating the angle of arrival of both uh, drone and uh, and the controller, we estimated the we estimated the range using tri uh, using triangulation method. And now, after 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 getting the angle and the range, then we performed the tracking. In 2018, we performed our outdoor trials in Belgium, Israel, and Romania, and these are some of our system setups. Uh, these are some uh, results. So these are the spectrum sensing results. As you can see, uh, these are the hopping signals, uh, the examples that, that I showed you before. And uh, these are two tracking results of flying drones. Uh, this is the angle axis and this is the range. As you can see, these uh, drones flying. Uh, these are the fl uh, fl uh, tracking of flying drones. 
now uh, the observations uh, overall our detection uh, our detection and tracking method worked quite well in absence of any communication or interfering signals however uh, there is uh, as you all know there is literally no place without Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and too many communications happen at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz ISM band uh, and this is the same this, this is the band where uh, where you have this drone and uh, drone and uh, remote control signal and there is at the same band you have uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth etc you have a lot of communication signal happening and this is one plot that I made uh, here as you can see uh, there you have uh, WL toys and these are the remote control signal you have a Taylor drone you have parrot you have Wi-Fi signal so you have all of the communications happening simultaneously at the same band so and if you need to if you want to uh, detect precisely which signal belongs to which source then you really need a very specialized detection technique so you need a specialized uh, technique to differentiate between a drone and a non-drone signal and also if you want to classify what type of drone there you also need one specialized uh, detection and classification technique and furthermore and if you want to neutralize a drone by RF jamming using protocol uh, protocol aware jamming you need more more knowledge about the signal itself for a protocol award jamming you need the you need to know the operating frequency you need the time of time of uh, time instance when the communication is going to happen you need the bandwidth you need the modulation type etc you need a lot of information Currently, we are working on DAP 1902, uh, which is funded by Belgian Defense. Uh, the objective of this project is to detect and classify a drone signal using artificial intelligence-based methods. Uh, the, uh, and from the signal, we want to classify the type of a drone by utilizing the time and frequency domain RF signatures. We want to estimate uh, the direction of arrival using a directional antenna, uh, using mechanical scanning. And furthermore, we want to perform a protocol over RF jam. Uh, as you all know if you want to perform uh, if you uh, want to use the artificial intelligence based method you need a database and uh, at the point at the moment we don't really have any open source or drone database that's why we are uh, that's why we started developing in uh, a drone database so with all of the drones and controller we have in the lab so here you see the uh, settings in the anequic chamber and these are some example drone signal drones uh, that we used for uh, to, uh, to create our database so there we, we used some commercial drone and some Wi-Fi communication signals now we developed an AI based drone detection and classification framework uh, we call it a two-stage detection and classification so at the first stage we uh, we detect the signal using a, a spectrum sensing method which, we, which is uh, called goodness of fit based spectrum sensing method so there we detect whether uh, there is a signal or a noise so after we detect there is a signal we pass it to the second stage so the second stage is the classification using an AI based uh, AI based framework which is named deep residual neural network so uh, with that developed and database we train our framework and then afterwards we eva we perform an evaluation to see whether our classifier can actually classify or not and overall with this model we obtained a very dis a very good result and this is another framework that we that we developed we call it combined detection and classification framework because this one framework can uh, can detect the signal and then also classify so at once and now uh, the framework is called uh, the framework is also an AI based framework which is called you only look once now uh, the good thing about this framework is you can detect the signal position for example here as you can see it detected the signal position in time and frequency domain furthermore you can estimate the features for example you can detect the operating frequency you can detect the time of occurrence you can detect the bandwidth of the signal you can detect the dual time hop rate etc and furthermore you can also uh, you can also classify the type of tone so you can do all of these things at the at the same time so here you can see we perform the detection classification in presence of four signals so you have three drone signal and one wi-fi and this we also tested in presence of seven signals so we developed the database and then we, with the database we trained this classifier and then we evaluated the performance and overall this framework work, also worked quite well
now one of the major requirement of a protocol award jammer is that you need to predict the future position uh, you need, uh, the the protocol award jammer needs to know the future position of the uh, of the spectrum so that the jammer is aware when and where the uh, the the drone signal will appear so that it can jam it, it can jam that signal the aim of this study is to predict uh, predict the time and frequency position of the of, of the drone signal so as you can see here so the aim of this study is to uh, observe, uh, observe observe until a certain period and then based on this observation it's supposed to predict the future position uh, if you look at spectrogram so it's the same so based on this observation uh, my framework is supposed to predict these positions uh, now we are use, we are currently using two uh, methodologies so one is automatic spectrum position uh, prediction uh, automatic spectrum prediction method so this is based on an ai based framework which is called cnn lstm framework and then we are using another two-stage approach so uh, there uh, the, uh, and the yolo model as i showed you before will detect the current spectrum position let's say these spectrum positions and based on this spectrum position an autoregressive model or another ai based framework this will predict the future positions now we are using an ai based framework for drone signal prediction uh, and the framework is called CNN LSTM framework. The aim is to learn the frequency hopping pattern. So let's say if if my drone has a pseudo random hopping pattern, the aim of this uh, the aim is that this framework will learn the pattern and then the predict then predict the future positions. Uh, overall, our framework worked quite well. So we uh, we generated synthetic data and also uh, commercial some commercial drone signals. So uh, to, uh, and then we used our framework to learn the pattern based on an observation period and predict the future pattern and there we tested with a fixed pattern and then a varying varying hop patterns so overall our uh, our model predicted quite well these are some examples where it learned the uh, the pseudo random frequency pattern hopping pattern and then it predicted Okay, so so far we have worked uh, with some supervised AI based frameworks. Now the limitation of such framework is that it can only classify the known signals, uh, uh, known signals available in the database and the library. However, these frameworks cannot classify an unknown signal uh, which is not included within the database. So uh, currently we are trying to develop a semi-supervised based framework. Now the aim is to differentiate between known and unknown signals. And and the classify the known signal so then it will be an incremental learning framework that every time let's say uh, your model is trained on a particular database and then you have a newer drone it detects that okay it's a newer drone then it will include it in the library and it will learn that uh, it will learn those features and then it will keep uh, it will start uh, classifying th that signal as well uh, there we are going to utilize both time and frequency domain signatures and there is one more uh, project that we are working current uh, right now uh, this is uh, the aim is to um, perform do estimation using directional antenna mounted on top of a pen tilt platform there we are going to use flare ptu5 and then we'll use a lock periodic antenna and uh, we are also participating in a NATO project. So it's called NATO ISTT 120. Uh, the title is RF fingerprinting of drones. So the aim is to create a uh, drone library uh, uh, to de uh, for developing such frameworks. Okay, so some final thoughts. Uh, so drone neutralization through smart RF jamming or protocol hour jamming is possible. However, you need a very precise detection and classification. Now the benefits is that you can jam with a high transmit power. So let's say you have a specific amount of transmit power. If you, uh, if you use that to jam only a specific hop, then you can use you can use the complete power to jam that hop and this will be effective at a very longer distance uh, furthermore you can only new only only jam the malicious uav so let's say if you know that which signal belongs to which drone let's say this signal uh, you have a, you detect a signal that belongs to a friendly drone you don't need to jam that signal and then you know that okay this signal belongs to uh, a malicious UAV, malicious uav so you just only jam that signal uh, furthermore in public places it's uh, you, it, it will be 
creating less interference minimum interference to the surrounding RF communication as I showed you before that in the same frequency band you have Wi-Fi Bluetooth and then drone signal if you know which signal belongs to a drone then you can only jam that signal while creating minimum interference to the RF communication and if you have a multi-sensor environment this is always also useful a precise detection and classification so let's say if you know the range and angular position from an RF detection you can pass that to a separate sensor or to a separate neutralization method that's all from me today uh, thank you very much for listening thank you very much for your attention if you have any question please ask i hope i'll be able to answer thank you